Through the slab, the objective is to record the displacement and the forces of spring with varying masses. Compare the experimental values with the theoretical values and improve Hooke's law. And to observe the oscillatory motion of the spring mass system and verify that angular frequency relates to the period. Hello, my name is Deshaun Mitchell, and I will be conducting a laboratory experiment that we created on springs. In order to do this lab, we're going to need this spring stand, a mass hanger in order to hang the masses from the springs that we will be using, an assortment of springs of which we already know the masses of, a meter stick to measure the change in the length of each of the springs that we will be using, a clamp to connect to the ring stand and hold our force sensor in our springs, a force sensor in order to show the amount of force that each that is exerted onto the spring, a calculator for any other needed calculations we need to perform, a lab quest in order to see the force that is recorded by the force sensor, and a bunch of weights in, that we can hang from the springs. In order to set up this lab, we first need to attach this clamp. So. Then you need to take the force sensor and attach it to the clamp like this. Then you take one of the springs that you've already that you already know the spring constant of and attach to the force sensor. Okay, after all this is assembled, you take the lab quest. You turn on your force sensor. Then on the lab quest, you go to sensors, wireless setup, and go direct. Wait for it to connect. Then connect to the force sensor. Ooh. Okay, once you have it connected, make sure to zero out your force sensor. And then you're ready to start collecting data. Okay, for this next part of the lab, I'm going to demonstrate how we're gonna collect data. So we have the lab all set up, we're ready. So we're gonna first start by hanging this, the mass holder on the spring and recording how much it, how much the length changes. So first we're gonna take the mass of the spring holder, this is about 50 grams, and then record it into our logger pro in our first column. So that's gonna be about zero point. That's going to be about 0 0.05 kilograms. Okay, now that we have that recorded, we'll go to the spring and record the change in its position. So, for this part, we're going to record the initial place of the spring that it falls on in the ruler. We'll record from the bottom of the spring before the hoop starts. So, from here, it appears to be about maybe 118.7, it appears to be. So I'm going to put that in my calculator. And then I'm going to hang the hanging mass on this and record the change in the length. So it looks like it might have went down to about 117.5, possibly. Maybe a bit lower than that. 117.3, 117.4. 
the output. 117.3. So it looks like it got displaced by about 1.4 centimeters. So then we'll put that into the Logger Pro. So that's about 0 0.014 meters. Next, we're going to record the mass, which is as simple as looking at our LabQuest and recording the amount of mass that it displays. So this is about 0 0.48 newtons. So we'll put that into the Logger Pro. And then that's our first column. So then after that, we'll repeat this process about four more times with different masses from our hanging masses. So I guess the next mass that we're going to use is about 100 grams. We're gonna add it to the hanging mass. So the water throw, we'll put it to about 0 0.15 kilograms. The displacement looks to be about and it's important to make sure that the mass the spring doesn't oscillate during this process in order to get really accurate results looks like it's at 112 this time 112 so this time we go it's 118.7 minus 112 and that gives us 6.7 centimeters this time which is 0 0.067 meters and the force on the force sensor is 1.47 newtons After we collected our data, you should end up with a linear data, a linear graph like this one. Okay. So now in order to investigate the relationship between force and displacement, further we'll add a trend line. We'll click on proportional fit and then try fit. Now we have an equation for the, now we have a line with an equation. This equation says that the force of the spring should be equal to 17.95 times the displacement of the spring. That is extremely similar to Hooke's law, which we've learned in class. It basically states that the force of the spring is equal to the spring constant times the displacement of the spring. According to this graph, our displaced, our, the spring constant should be about 17.95. However, the spring, that, the spring constant that we actually had was about 15. So we were a bit off in our calculations for, for the data, which can be accounted for in a numerous amount of things, like human error and trying to read the ruler. And this ruler was also pretty warped. So that could have affected the data a bit. Go ahead. Now that we've looked at Hooke's law and tested it in the laboratory, we're going to look at another aspect of springs, that being its oscillation. We know that if we put a force or a mass on a spring, it's going to oscillate like uh, so it oscillates up and down so we're going to now look at the period of that oscillation and compare it to both the spring constant and the mass and see how they relate to each other in a laboratory experiment in order to do this we're going to use the logger pro again the hanging mass the force sensor and the weights In order to test, find out the period of the oscillation of the spring, we're going to use angular frequency. So we know that angular frequency is going to be equal to 2 pi times t. And for springs only, angular frequency is also equal to the square root 
of k over m, the spring constant over the mass. So since these two are both equal to omega, the angular frequency, we can set these equal to each other. And if we, and if we square it, we get this equation to find the period of the motion of the spring. So we're going to solve for the period of the spring with the masses we have here. And using that period, um, we're going to graph it in longer pro against the periods that we find experimentally in our lab procedures. And basically, if the, if the slope of that graph of the two periods against each other equals one, then we know that this is true. And if it's not, then, then we know that this is false. Okay. Now we're going to conduct our experiment and find the period of the oscillations of the spring. So first we're going to hang this mass onto the spring and we're going to record it in the logger pro. So I'm going to press play right here and just let it bounce. Okay. Now that we recorded that into the logger pro, We'll analyze the function here. We'll zoom in on the oscillation parts. We'll zoom in again. Then we'll start at one peak. And then end at the other peak. Then we'll analyze statistics and force. Here, you can see that the change in time was about 0 0.32 seconds. So that's going to be our experimental period for the mass of 0 0.05 kilograms. And our experimental period was... Zero point three two seconds. All right, now that we've gotten the experimental period, we can get our theta radical by using this equation. So the spring constant is given to us by the bag. It says 15 newtons and our mass is going to be 0 0.05. So we'll have to solve for t. So we divide both sides by 4 pi squared. So we have k over 4 pi squared times m equals 1 over t squared. Then you flip both which will give you 4 pi squared m over k is equal to t squared. Okay? Then you take the square root of both sides and then plug into your calculator. So now we're going to find the theoretical value of t using this equation, but we've already input it into the logger pro. So all we have to do is put in 0 0.05 for the mass and it should output the Should already output the same. Should output the val our theoretical like that, and all we have to do is repeat that four more times. Now that we've collected all of our data, we can then plot the two, the experimental values and the actual values, or the calculated values against each other to form this line. So, if the experimental and actual values are equal, then the slope of this graph should be equal to 1. So let's see. We'll go to curve fit, proportional fit, and then we'll do try fit. And then we'll press OK. So, based, since, based on this trend line, it looks like the slope is equal to 1, or pretty close to 1. It's actually 0 0.93. So, based on that value, it looks like the period can easily be calculated for with angular frequency. Okay. We measured the oscillatory motion of the spring mass system and then plotted that information on a force time graph where we were able to solve for period. Then we were able to calculate the angular frequency with the known mass and spring constant and uh, prove period a second time with the relationship between angular frequency and the period. Then we plotted those two values onto a chart where we were able to find 
that both the theoretical and experimental period were almost the same with a slope of almost 1.